We've got our heater cranking and we're ready to do some more wiring. I'm feeling pretty good about this stuff now. Check, 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 check. Check, check, check. All right, so hopefully the uh, heater is not uh, too much noise here. You always got to try this once, see how bad it is. So, uh, in any case, um, a lot of good things have happened. So, I ordered a bunch of stuff for the car that said it was going to take three weeks to come in, and like three days later, it showed up. And so I'm like, woohoo! So uh, I went ahead and I got a battery. So it's a 51 hour battery ready for the back because I need to know exactly where that battery is to uh, install and cut all these cables that are you know extra long and stuff. And so I need to put the back plate in, get that ready to go. Uh, I have my custom heater control valve uh, uh, bracket that I made. Um, and so I need to install that, do the front uh, wiring area for that. Um, there's also the harness that I need to kind of truncate back. Now, what's interesting is, you know, most people are like, hey, no big deal. Just cut off some of this stuff. No big deal. When I talk to Holly, they're like, well, we highly suggest you don't do that because... If you have a problem with the harness, we're going to point fingers at you and we're not going to warranty this for you. So 
and and they mainly talked about the sensitivities of like the five volt rail and stuff of the ECU, which of course, if you remember, I just tapped into the five volt rail uh, recently. And so I think what I'm gonna do is, th is this in stages. One is, is peel all this back, see if I could actually pull all these wires back or they actually tapped right here or not, probably not. Pull all this back and then just coil it up and leave it in there for now. Get the car started and make sure everything works, blah, 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 blah. And then if I do decide to modify something, well, then we know it was me and we fix it from there. But, you know, maybe I won't need to modify it. Once you take off some of the sleeving and all that stuff, it does shrink down a little bit. So, so what I did order and, you know, Heath sent me a comment that was saying, hey man, that was really painful to watch you solder stuff. Why don't you get a bunch of these things? And I'll be honest with you, I saw these on, I believe it was uh, Motor Week, you know, Goss's Garage. He always has these little tips. In fact, that's where I learned about the orange Permatex Loctite, where it's like as strong as red, but you could break it like blue. Um, I saw these and I'm like, man, that's a pretty brilliant idea. However, it seems like if you're only using a heating gun that the melting point is just way too low and why would you use that? That's kind of my thought process. And so I didn't really think much of it, you know, moved on. I got a soldering iron. I got plenty of solder that I've owned for 20 years, never gone through a reel. I figured I'll, I'll do some of this stuff. But, you know, using alligator clips and you've, you've seen me try to solder stuff here and, you know, in the back there for the, uh, for the fuel, um, it's a big pain in the ass uh, because I don't have an assistant to hold the wires. If I had someone here like grabbing a wire and just holding it for me, no big deal. Solder it right up, go on, no big deal. So two things I was kind of shocked to learn. Uh, one was, what is the temperature of a heating gun? I figured, I don't know, 150 degrees to melt some heat, heat shrink. No, it's like a thousand degrees. I was like, whoa, way off. Didn't, had no idea it was that hot. So that was one good fact. Second good fact is most of the solder for these things are rated to about 260, 280 degrees. And okay, that's good enough for me. I, you know, I thought maybe it was like 80 degrees or 100 degrees. And so I was like, well, I don't want to put that in. That's, that's too low of a point, but that's actually not true. So somewhere around 260 to 280 on these, 1,000 on the gun, uh, no brainer. These things are pennies on the dollar. I mean, literally, like I bought, I don't know how many pieces this is, it's like we'll say 150 pieces or something like that for nine bucks or something. So most of them that I'll be using is blue and, and red. And then these two probably never use, but, um, and you could get all sorts of kits. You could buy just, just a package of these or whatever, but I wanted to just buy a little starter pack and just see how I like it and how easy it is and uh, kind of go from there. Now, the other reason that I didn't go too big on this, because not only did I want to test it, but while I'm working the car right now, I'm using crimp connectors because most of this isn't permanent. Anything that I deemed permanent, I will actually use those and try them out. But when I come back after the body's off the car and redo all the wiring, that's when I'm gonna actually probably use a ton of these things and just make it 100% all soldered. If, if it's needed that way. So that's the first thing. The other thing is, is I told you about the reversing relays and these weren't supposed to come in for a while and they came in, so that's awesome. Um, these weren't supposed to come in for three weeks and I tried looking for, you know, like, I want 12 feet of, you know, 10 pin cable or whatever and it just didn't exist in what I exactly wanted. So what did exist was get your individual wires and you can make your own harness. So I have a 10 piece harness here and then I just put sleeving on it and I could do whatever I want, make each one its individual length. And so I'm totally psyched about that. And then of course I told you I got the battery. So that means I have basically four areas of working. Front area, what I'll consider the uh, 10 pin cable coming back and the relays back here. Consider that second project. Third project is inside the doors. I got door poppers, which I haven't installed yet, and the power windows. And then we're looking at the whole trunk area with the battery and all this cabling, which of course, what's nice is once I cut this, 
I get the sleeve, I get the cables. So I get extra stuff off of that that I could re reuse somewhere else. And then really another area is the little switch panel I made. I gotta wire up some harness to go over there to control uh, all my switches for headlights and things like that. So, so shockingly enough, I thought I wasn't gonna be able to do some of this stuff for three weeks. And as of today, I actually have all the tools that I know of at this moment to finish all this stuff. So I just have to kind of figure out exactly, you know, where I'm going to put this and then start figuring out how the harness is going and wire it all up, get my dryer in there, uh, figure out how I'm going to maybe tie some of this cable up maybe to the bottom dryer bracket because some of this stuff needs to go around this way. Some of it needs to go around that way, which for the most part, I kind of want to leave what's already there. I got one more positive wire I got to run through here, but I feel like I'm out of space right there. And, you know, things like this probably have an extension on this because I don't think I want this plastic anywhere near this. I'd rather have a small cable an extra inch away coming down the side. So those are things I need to decide. And so... I'm just gonna kind of sit here, evaluate everything, and see where I start digging in. I got a feeling I want to start on the uh, air conditioning heater control valve and get that installed and start wiring that up. And since some that will be a permanent wire, I'll use some of these things and try it out and kind of go from there. got that installed we have enough space to get our wiring on we have enough space to get all our tubes in so that's not an issue um, another note my bits are used enough that they're starting to go dull again so that really sucks and I didn't really have enough space to get any kind of pressure behind it so I had to you know shim my hand with a with a two inch item to kind of get it up there so Anyways, um, so now we're kind of ready to get this all wired in and kind of see where we're going to put that, what I believe to be a relay, um, you know, maybe mounted over here somewhere. So we'll just have to see how that flushes out. So you saw I cut some wires and that's actually to something uh, going to a sensor I need. The only thing is the sensor is coming from a, from the top and honestly the wiring loom doesn't work from the top. It needs to come from the bottom so I need to extend that an extra foot or two. So what I'm going to do is extend and solder on some cables here, put that and my ignition back into the sleeve and then add on to the sensor out there and uh, you know cut off the ends of what I don't need before I do that and then I'll just need another sleeve that's smaller and I might need to extend this ground cable up back to the head so we'll have to see how that goes um, but I'll get there when I get there
All right, so I decided that I need two times this length added on, and they actually send this four wire cable that is supposed to attach these. But of course, the red wire is going to the same exact place, so why not send a five, a five cable? But so I got this extra wire. Um, and then, you know, I'll probably use some of these things to put this together. However, I probably want to stagger them so they don't all build up in a bunch and, you know, have them in series almost in a sense physically. So uh, that's what I'm going to try to attempt to do here. And I got to, I think I have plenty of cable, but I got to keep in mind that I don't want to stagger it so much that I'm actually losing my total length of cable. So I'm looking at the solder right now and did it disperse? Yeah, it dispersed. Was it perfect and awesome and everything silver? No, it's my first one. So I feel like, you know, I don't want to overheat the, the plastic and jack it up. Um, is it solid? Yeah, it's solid. Um, we'll see how they go, but I bought a reputable brand, so we'll keep trying it. And, you know, the length of this, or the thickness of this after it's done is not too bad. So I could probably do two in the same area and then maybe another two in a shorter area. I don't have to like spread it out four separately. That one went a lot quicker and I, it actually was still, the solder was still wet when I tried to tug on it so you got since it's encapsulized it takes a little bit longer for it to seal up but yeah I mean I guess this is cool. New technology, it's crazy. If I did want to stay around I would have had to uh, cut these wires a little bit shorter to do that, which I could still do, but I'm throwing caution into the wind. So I thought I'd be using a lot of these blue ones, but the red ones are working fine. Is it easier? Yeah, it's easier. Does it look pretty? Not necessarily. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it seems really solid, so now I'm just going to figure out my routing and then try to put some sheathing on this if I have enough and uh, get this thing going.
So if I didn't have this bulk here and this flat wire, you know, I could have slipped this thing on, but I don't think it was going to work that way, so I decided to just do it the regular way. All right, so that's as much as I'm doing because this might be getting cut off. This might be getting, you know, cut off. Um, so. Fact, I haven't decided if I'm just going to coil this and plug it in since it'll be underneath the car. Um, I think that'll be the easiest. I mean, I could chop all this stuff and solder it and all that, but having something like that's not too bad either. So no one's ever going to see it. And then I'll put a sheath on it too. As I was going through, my, my thumb was cramping up from all the pressure I was pushing, so that was kind of brutal. That is done. 